Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is the new Senate Minority Leader of the Tennessee State Senate. That's Senator Jeff Yarbrough from here in Nashville. Senator, before we get back into legislative matters, um, the next statewide election in Tennessee is in 2020. The Senate seat now held by Lamar Alexander is going to be open. Your name keeps coming up in speculation about who might be the Democratic candidate. What's your level of interest? We just finished an election in November, and uh, we had a lot of elections I, last year. We had a we? lot of elections in Nashville uh, last year, and I don't think anybody's ready to talk about the about the next one, including me. Yeah, I, I understand. You said you haven't even spoken to your spouse about this at this point. I haven't talked to my family about it, so I'm not going to talk to everybody else. But is this something that somewhere during 2019 you're going to probably have that conversation to decide whether you are interested in running for that race? Sure, I try. I think that politicians don't need to spend every second thinking about some other job they should run for, but at some point I'll spend some time thinking about well you're right about that but if if you're a relative unknown across the state you have to start <laughs> earlier these days to get your support and most importantly for your fundraising situation so oh, sure so if you're gonna make a decision you almost have to make it sometime in the next say six months or so that's probably right um, you just got reelected to the state Senate uh, you've got a four-year term so if you ran in 2020 you could still keep your Senate seat does that is that something that may play some role in your sort of put it mulling it over in your I, mind I mean I don't really think that that's the the way to think about about running for for offices but but sure I mean I guess it's I at least don't have to make a choice between the two so. well, well just just in general the there hasn't been a Tennessee Democrat elected to the US Senate since 1990 when Al Gore got elected to his last term um, who, what, how do the Democrats need to be different, especially after Phil Bredesen, everybody thought was their best candidate, was not able to make it last year? Well, I think Governor Bredesen ran a great race in a really strange time in American politics. Uh, we're living in a time that's deeply polarized and where decisions get made on about national politics in a way that kind of turns that old Tip O'Neill, all politics is local on its head. Uh, right now, everything, all politics is national, and the government that we're getting as a result is is not serving us well. Uh, you also, your name also keeps coming up in a race for this year, and that's the, that's the, the mayor of Nashville, Mayor Browley, will be seeking re-election. Your name has come up as a potential opponent to him. Is that is that in any way? Again, in your I don't have any plans to to, to 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 run for any th things right now. And so. the time frame on that would be even shorter because I don't know. in August, and here sure. we are in in January already. So people who want to run need to be getting in there pretty soon. Do you expect that to be a contested race this year? I think that it'll be a contested race because uh, I think. Nashville is, a, is a, a city that remains on the move, and it's a, it's a job that people, you know, lots of people could see uh, themselves in. But, uh, you know, I, but so I, I would expect that it would be a contested race, but I'm not sure what that contest looks like. Um, let's go back to the legislature and talk a little bit about uh, school vouchers. Uh, they've been before the Senate a couple of times before under, under the Haslam administration. The Senate's passed it twice. Governor Lee has even seems to be an even stronger supporter of it. Do you expect him to bring that before the legislature, or are you waiting to see particularly what kind of uh, education commissioner he puts in office? I think that's a really big open question. Uh, you know, I think there's lots of the governor's agenda that most people can get behind, but uh, Taking money from public schools and putting them into private school vouchers is just bad public policy. You can't find a single state that's tried that idea that hasn't uh, re basically regretted doing so because they don't work. They don't work well for the students that, that use them. They're, they don't work well for the school finances in the states. Uh, they're bad public policy and we should avoid it. In terms of the changes in the Senate and over the four years you were there, you've probably had at least a third of the members turn over. Do you right. see that being something that would change the, the ability of the Senate for a third time to pass vouchers? Look, I mean, I think that besides being really bad public policy, they're also really bad politics. Uh, I mean, one of the people who was a, an avowed sponsor of that legislation uh, at the time of, his, of a recent re-election switched positions because that's not a it's it's not a it's not a policy idea that people support in communities people care a lot about their local schools and want them to succeed and they they see vouchers as a threat to that not even for a uh, some sort of pilot program which is what the governor wanted to do just to start it out primarily in the, the failing schools which primarily would be focused in Memphis and Nashville well, I mean, I think that that is, uh, I think people recognize that 
that pilot aspect is a way is a way to start doing these and expand them uh, statewide. And so I think the only way you could even get close to getting it passed would be to do it. Uh, would be to pass it with uh, where pe where legislators are voting for vouchers for their for areas that don't affect their constituents. But the bigger problem for the Lee administration, if they want to do this, is probably going to be in the House. Uh, vouchers has been a non-starter there, maybe for some of the reasons you're talking about, particularly from the local school boards who fear that vouchers ultimately will present competition for them from the private school market. Look, I mean, I think it's going to be a big fight. This is, it's like the zombie movies where this is the proposal that just won't die no, ha no matter how many times you kill it. This thing is gets beaten down in the House every year, but it comes back and it continues to be a fight. A bill that continues to go further and further, it, it gets killed every year or every session, but it comes back is the medical cannabis bill. It's being sponsored by one of your Nashville colleagues yes. for that, uh, Steve, Steve Dickerson, he's a Republican. Do you see that making further progress this year? Will we finally see one of the actual bodies have, take a floor vote on it? You know, I do see it moving further as time goes on. And I mean, I think the real outstanding question there is, what does it look like with a lot of new members on this issue? Uh, you know, the closer you are to people on this issue, the, clo the more you recognize that uh, people want to see uh, some provision for medical marijuana in, uh, that's safe, that's con controlled, but want to see some movement there. And I would say with 30 new House members, you probably see a lot closer movement there. State Senator Jeff Yarborough is our guest. He's the new minority leader of the Tennessee State Senate. Back to continue our conversation after this break.